catch her over to Elden Ring. And come on. There we go. <laughs> hey, this is Jupiter Exile, and we're playing a bit more Elden Ring. Uh, I've been frustrated with this lately because we're working on Melania, and she is incredibly hard. But I was thinking the other day about this, and I realized I'm being silly. Um, because I could do a wield uh, in this fight and just be stronger. Only question is, what is our ideal straight sword to throw in the offhand? Uh, and let's go farm some materials to make it actually pretty good. Uh, da -da 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 -da. I suppose there's no particular reason not to use just a, sh uh, a short sword or whatever else. But I'm not actually certain what kind of other options we could be working with. I think I can go find something with better scaling than this. Let me run a quick search, actually. <laughs> what kind of straight swords do we have access to? I think we have to go out and hunt something random. Uh, I know a lot of people use the Lord Sworn straight sword, which I appear to have missed. I think that's from one of these. Um... Hmm. Can be dropped, can be dropped. Hey there, Sully. How's it going? Okay, it looks like this is the kind of weapon people have to farm out. Uh, and I'm assuming that the reason it's used in particular is probably because of length. Okay, so there's a specific spot where it looks like a soldier will drop that weapon. So we're going to go hunt that down real quick. Uh, it's the fourth church. Yeah, it should be in this vicinity. So we're going to kill some guys around here and see if we can't get ourselves a new sword. Then I'm going to have to go farm some runes somewhere so I can get that upgraded subsequently. Let's see, it should be south of the church. Said it was dropped by a headless knight. Somewhere around here. Is it some kind of a tough guy hanging out? What do we got? Ah, I see. These guys can drop it. Well, come on. You know, let's fight. You gonna teleport behind me yet? Yeah, we're pretty late in the game. <laughs> Bolts. All right. So this is certainly a maybe kind of drop from these guys. Any more of them? Oh yeah, quite a few. Hey, buddies. Well, you got me two pieces of gear. It's kind of cool. Are there more of these guys hanging out? I'm assuming it's just a few of them. And now we need to go rest to make more show up. That's okay. Pretty sure I already cleared that ever jail. Okay. See, there was a grace around here somewhere. There we go. Let's tag that grace to get those fellas back up. And we'll beat them down again. Hey. Come on in. More bolts. I 
I am too low. There we go. Nothing out of him. Run back and rest. Um, if I equip the Silver Knight Helm, not the, sil uh, the Silver Tier Mask, that'll increase the drop rates of enemies for a bit. And so long as I'm working on this, we can switch this out for uh, Silver Pickled Foul Feet, which increase item drop rates. I think we'll need to use one Foul Foot per uh, enemy cycle, but that's okay. By the way, can I just kill you, like, normally? Oh yeah, I don't even need to use Flame of the Red Mains. This is, like, enemies from the first area, after all. Nothing? I wonder what the drop rate actually is on this weapon I'm trying for. Okay, that did not remove my foul foot effect, so it's still uh, in play. Both of you dropped items. Lord Sworn's Bolt, Brass Shield, okay. Brass Shield's not awful. Bolts. I really like that you can tell whether an enemy dropped an item before they are finished dying, as opposed to other Dark Souls games, where you'd have to kind of sit around and wait. Neither of them dropped anything. Two drops here. Bolt smithing stone. It's not quite. Blocking is futile. Gauntlets. I wonder if it's these guys or the Godric Knights that actually have a better chance of dropping this weapon. One. Oh, let's up. Ah, there's the sword. Okay. Now that we've got that sword, there is something more challenging that I need to take care of. Switch it back over to the Glintstone Crown for a moment. That is, I have to get a particular ash from Redmain Castle. That I had skipped before. And we're gonna have to come from the outside, I believe. I don't think it'll be easy to get here if I go from the inside of the castle. If I go from the inside of the castle, I can get an alternative. Are they gonna go back to act? Okay, the ballistas are active now. Or not the ballistas, the trebuchets. Ouch. Yeah, Impassable Great Bridge is kind of, uh, kind of lives up to its namesake.
it's not fully consistent where the trebuchet shots are aimed, so we can't really get like a dedicated method around here. I forget where this goes also. Where does this lead? Um, is there a message? Hold. Okay, that's not very helpful. I'm pretty sure this doesn't go to Redmain Castle, is all I can really remember about it. <laughs> uh, it might go to Fort Gale, which has a transporter that goes to Redmain Castle. Oh no, this actually does go inside Redmain Castle. But probably further inside than we actually want to be. But you know, this might be fine. As long as I don't get killed. Just need to get past all these flamethrowers. Here we go. So when you activate the festival to go after Radon, a lot of the enemies in Redmain Castle wind up despawning, and I lost track of some things. Uh, there were some items that I missed that are somewhere around past all these flamethrower guys. So I'm not actually sure where it is, and I'm going to have to explore a bit, but there, there's a whetstone around here. And if I use that whetstone, I can make uh, anything into a fire weapon. Also, I'm hearing maybe a scarab beetle somewhere. I'm trying to pinpoint it, but I'm coming up blank. Let's see. So there are basically two things uh, I'm looking for, and if I could find either one of them, that works out. Okay. Uh... Yeah. Could be the item I needed was over there, or up there. So I don't think I've gotten past this pumpkin head before. So that might be what I need to do. Anyway, getting this item will allow me to have an, a second fire weapon. Right now, I can only really have one fire enchanted weapon at a time, because I never got the red whetstone. Uh, and I do not have a second fire-based weapon art. So there are two things hanging out in uh, the castle that can solve this problem for me. One of them is there is a weapon art that's... Um, kind of over the walls in the back of the castle that I didn't get because it's surrounded by bats and I was already frantic enough trying to get through that area. The other one is there's a whetstone around here that lets me put fire on any weapon that's doing a physical weapon art. Enough out of you. Lomberge, okay. Lomberge, I've heard, is uh is decent. Causes high blood loss effects. Blood loss is really overpowered in this game. Get a smithing stone five, which is not worthless. I mean, that's something. So over there is the beetle that I would need to interact with, for one. More smithing stones, okay. 
So I could possibly hop the wall over there to get where I need to go. So this is just a cliff. I really blitzed to the end of this place before. Okay, so we've got some large doggos in this courtyard that I'd rather not contend with. So they can be some rough customers. The fight back for a sec there. Dog there. Okay, this is the back area. Death run for the beetle. I don't care if I get killed by bats. That does it. Cool. That's what I needed. As expected. Nope, I'm still working on strats to fight that boss. That boss is incredibly difficult. So I'm trying to get some new gear that might help me out. So then, if I equip the Lord Sworn's straight sword over here. Oh, by the way, um, reduce my attack by eight in the main hand. And then we will set an Art of War on this uh, to the Flaming Strike. All right, now we need to go get runes so that we can upgrade the heck out of this. So where are we getting some runes? What are our good candidates for runes? Uh, there's a few possible areas with tough enemies that could give us a lot of rewards. There are a couple of dragons near the Moonlight Altar. I think our current set is not ideal for killing dragons. We are very all or nothing based. I tend to like being able to take a hit when I fight those. Hmm. There's actually a few different dragons I could try and take on. because There's some that are up in the... Uh, um, like outer area too. Still got business over in these places. Hmm. If there was a dungeon I could easily clear, that would be a big deal. Suppose I still haven't gotten through the giant uh, based hero's grave. I know a little more about hero's graves now. I could try my luck at this for a bit and kind of remember why I stopped running it. <laughs> I'm guessing there's something in here that was causing a big snag. Yeah, that attack pattern is really clutch. Sit down. Okay, so it's got... Yeah, this is the place that has um, some of those areas. Oh, and there are imps up there. 
I can see why I might not have wanted to commit to this. If I ran up there and got in the upper area, I could get past those uh, that other stuff, I think. Uh, let me just change up my armament for a bit so I can run this more normally. Go back to some like usual stuff for me to have equipped. Scarlet Tabard has a pretty good defensive profile. Okay, this should be pretty good uh, good enough damage resistance for me to take at least one hit from things. Ouch. Can't take two hits, though. Dodge too early. I might be able to avoid this Fire Monk or just drag him along for a bit. Then again, I should probably just not hit him with fire damage. So, where is my Battle Axe? He's a tough customer either way. No doubt. Hmm. I remember I got to the base of the Oriza Hero's Grave, but then I realized that the boss fight there is like a double fight. And I said, no, thank you. This guy still has quite a lot of health. Ouch. And I don't remember the attack patterns for these freakish things. They don't show up that often. He's made of stone, so I think magic is the most effective. Like High-powered or fast magical attacks might be the way to go. Um, anyways... Let's get up to the part of the dungeon that has the um, stuff running back and forth that's going to try to kill me. The chariots. So there's a few paths I can do here, obviously. I think this is the path I might have explored a bit more. Oh no, this doesn't actually lead anywhere. And it pulls in more imps. Awesome. <laughs> Ah, let me get past. Stand here for a sec. That's hilarious. He got wise.
Can I go lower? Nope. Okay. Multitasking. It wouldn't let me close that dialog box for a... It wouldn't let me uh, attack him because the dialog box is open. This guy's definitely getting screwed up on this terrain. No, thank you. Okay, so back through here. It's like a falling point to land on top of that other thing. So I would guess that I only get a... Uh, like a dispeller thing in the jig over here if that's active. Something's gonna jump out at me. Cranial vessel candle stand. Okay. So that candle stand is the reward for uh, going through that area, so come over here and we'll just take this elevator. So where does this put us? I definitely haven't been this far in to this particular dungeon. I must have found it turned around almost right away. First off, lever and then light ahead. Ah, I see, I see. I have to hit the lever that was at the top of this elevator which is going to change the positioning of the light. So that would be this lever. Right? No? Okay. Hmm. Is there another lever in the room? Definitely don't see one. See a lever here. Yeah, no jumping. All right, got it. So a lever there. Is it this lever? I see. That's why it's light required ahead, because we can't fight this giant while he's all, like, uh, dark enchanted. See anything particular beneath me? There's a door in the back. He might have to be killed in order to trigger like the next thing to happen. That's that is just for calling the elevator. Hmm. Okay, so how do we get the light down? Is there another is there, like, something that's going to reflect the light? Is there some kind of illusory interactable? Try down, and then try down. Okay. I might know what that means. Let's give that a shot. So it's possible that this is a good old Dark Souls double lift. So we're going to move that. Ah uh, ha ha ha! Yeah, so we had to trigger the lift to get this over here. And now I can draw this giant over to this room, and that'll make him tangible. So we can try to kill him. I'm going to have to lure him up here a bit. Also, a throwing weapon might be a good idea, but I don't think I have the time, really. Ouch. 
Dodge too early. We're okay. Missed. Slurp. Empower. Ouch. He's going for the sword. Got him. Somewhere a heavy door open. Good to go. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, there's, there's usually something kind of nice down at the bottom of these, uh, different crypts and tombs. Especially the ones that are marked as heroes' graves. So there's probably a nice rare thing at the end of this. I don't know what, though. Okay, we've got America Steak, that's very good. This is almost no, chan no chance of me beating this the first time. Let's see what we got. And, uh, we'll go ahead and use this. I think its benefits are not tuned to what I'm wielding right now, but that's okay. Oh, we just got an Ancient Hero of Zamor. I've beaten guys like this before. Yeah, he got me. But yeah, you can see the damage I'm dealing there is really good. Uh, I can probably beat this guy in just a couple of tries. Um, I'm using America Stakes, so I don't get to change my physic between fights. But that's alright, that's alright. I'm gonna actually go, I think, a little harder on this guy. Can I equip the Great Axe with my current setup? Uh, not with these items. What if I... Uh, if I throw on the Star Scourge, I can use it. Let's go. I've got this set for Barbaric Roar right now. Uh, let's see if we can make that work or not. That's fun. <laughs> okay, it's kind of funny, but it's not going to work out well. Because I'm not going to get openings that big. And the damage is honestly just worse than Royal Knight's Resolve. It, just like for singular physical damage, nothing really seems to outperform Royal Knight's Resolve. Oh, I accidentally got nicked by that, I guess. Allegedly. I disagree with that. I was trying to set up a charge attack from outside of the radius. But the game had other plans. Yeah, he's not going to use the Frost Breath every single time. That would be a bit generous. I'm thinking just uh, the reward for killing him will probably be enough for me to throw as many upgrades onto a weapon as I care to. And that's the reason for the... That's the whole reason for the detour. Now, the... Um, stuff I have right now, uh, equipment-wise. There we go. Top off. Up. 
Ah, okay, so the he does a low slash as part of that double, so I can't jump in on it. A lot of his other attacks, I can just jump in on, and I'll low profile the attack. I'm getting a few more message appraisals. I should check my uh, messages. How are they doing? Try jumping and short ladder ahead. Try south and then visions of merchant. Old codger aheads. I actually gotten 14. Writing them down in Limgrave. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. Um, I'm actually going to try out using just the fire longsword. Uh, since my current um, physic is tuned to fire. Two hands. Yeah, that's good damage, actually. There we go. His phase transition's really long, so with a fully upgraded weapon, I'm just gonna chop through that. Oh, we got the full armor set. That's kind of cool. And it doesn't look like there's a treasure chest here, so I guess the full Zamor armor set is one of our rewards for this dungeon. And we got 83,000 uh, runes, which is quite enough. Uh, we'll grab the root resin as well. Back to round table hold. Okay, and now for what I was uh, gonna come here to do. Lord Sworn's Fire. Change this out. This goes back to the, uh, where is it? Blue Dancer Charm. Blue Dancer Charm, unequip those. And this is going to be Fire Scorpion Charm. And then we'll run over here to Hug. I think I have the Smithing Stones necessary to upgrade this. Okay, I got stuck on Smithing Stone 3s. Let's restock this. Looks like I've got the rest. Two and five eighteen, pretty good. I see. Uh, so it wasn't just me that happened to think he'd forget who you were as well. I knew he'd burn himself out. Oh, and Hugh, I think you're good talking into leaving us up. No, it's only proper. I'll remain with Hugh. He made me who I am today. I'd like to return the cup. Please, Hugh was always say so. Slay her, slay the god Marika. I've been thinking that it may be that Grace itself is a curse. That Grace is Marika's curse, her will imposed onto us. 
it's unclear to me if grace is sourced from America or if it's sourced from the, the greater will, the outer god. Now, that being said, the greater will is the outer god that empowers America. And I, I understand that she's rebelling against it somewhat, trying to get herself from out of the th from out from under the thumb of the greater will after being empowered by it for a very long time. Okay, we'll have to come back and do more if we want to upgrade something else later. But now, let's get back to taking on America, and I'm just going to be loosey-goosey about it. We don't have uh, crazy expectations for this. This is an incredibly difficult fight. It's just the nature of it. We're just gonna fight for a bit, see what happens. Okay, uh, the jumping L1 is okay. The standing L1 is okay. The charging L1 we don't really want to use because it's more committal. Hey there. I jumped into the... <laughs> rolled into the kick again. The animation she does for the kick is a bit different, but it keeps catching me off guard. Like, I'm, I'm just not accustomed to her moving forward and doing nothing like that. So I've been treating it like the side dashing slash, which is what gives me the bad roll timing. Or her forward jumping slash. Same difference. Okay, the damage is pretty good. So that was just some pretty basic attack strings, and we dealt thousands of damage to her really fast. She caught me with the grab. That's death. I dodged just a little too early on that. I have to be very mindful of stamina consumption with this setup. As I'm eating the stuff pretty fast. with cosmetics. Stamina, please. Okay. Waiting for stamina killed me. There are some openings that I'm going to have to sacrifice on just to get stamina back, which is frustrating. But the thing that's actually frustrating about it is that uh, not attacking her will create more openings for me. Like, not attacking her will put me in greater danger.
Dang it. Yeah, she just did a standing slash. I was really waiting for her to do waterfowl dance almost the entire time. Maybe, maybe waterfall down. Maybe waterfowl dance is on cooldown at the start of the fight, and it's not actually unlocked by her being at a health threshold. Maybe she just can't use it if I kill her too fast. That's a novel idea. She got me. Blade of Honestly, this, this kind of damage output, it has the potential to make the fight so fast I don't have to worry about a lot of crap. Because if I kill her really, really fast, I can just rely on a good RNG pattern to actually make the kill happen. Oh, right, I was using the Warrior Jar Shard before. Eh, that's fine. She eventually made the choice that I... She eventually beat me at the rock, paper, scissors. Is that kind of setup where she's doing triple slash? Um, she can just kind of force a rock, paper, scissors check um, multiple times in a row. And if I beat her on it, the payoff is pretty good. Like, if I had dodged that particular attack... Part of me gets the feeling... Oh, dodge early on the kick. Part of me is getting the feeling that she can actually input Rita dodge uh, a dodging stab. Because she seems to do it so often. It might be that it's based on proximity, though. But there are other attacks she can do where if I roll and I don't attack, she'll beat me out on a roll to normal attack instead of a rolling attack. couldn't roll in time. The, um, the lag from the uh, L1s is too much. If I uh, take it that far. I can never do more than two attacks in a sequence. Well, actually, if I had attacked a third time instead of going for a roll, maybe it would have interrupted her. It's hard to call. Honestly, I'm so done with overthinking this fight. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. That that setup is almost always a kill. If she uses that attack, you just die. Just die and do the next fight. Maybe the reason Let Me Solo Her is wearing a pot over his head is specifically so he does more damage with pot-based items. Oh, that's Waterfowl. 
She hasn't done that in a while. Do I have the head pot item? I think I do. I think I do. I do. I've got the jar. Let's go. Learn from the master. <laughs> We have to emulate the one true path to defeating Melania. Are you man enough to don the jar? I didn't see her go into the kick until it was too late. Which is sometimes the problem with the uh, Red Main Flame Strat. I didn't dodge fast enough, I guess. That's junk. Totally dodged. I'm getting markedly less damage out of the Blue Dancer charm because the jar is a pretty heavy helmet. That's pretty funny. My dodge didn't come out in time. Her hit, we're doing a lot of damage. Just as a note, this boss is still uh, really ridiculous in terms of her basic kit. There's no other, like, ice pot-based thing, right? Just the freezing pots. There's no ice jar that I found. Not like a basic pot. I've only found them in the ritual pot. The, I've only found a ritual pot version, not a cracked pot version. Swarm pots are possibly effective against her or volcano pots or something like that. Huh. Actually, that might be pretty good against her. Who knows? Do I dare? Okay, for a little bit, I'm gonna try throwing volcano pots at her whenever I would use red, uh, Flame of the Red Mains and see how effective that is. Also, just like now. Yeah, she'll move. Okay, that's funny. But I doubt it's effective. Oh, I'm, I'm just wearing the jar head. It makes my pot items more powerful. Um, it's just, just going for giggles. I need to be amused. 
by something other than this fight, because this fight is really obnoxious. <laughs> Being said, I think I am actually going to take it off. Uh, and the volcano pot ID is also not panning out, so not, let's not bother with it. Now, that's, that is the volcano pots. I think uh, there are the fire pots that might still be okay. I don't know. It's hard to hard to figure out. Is the continuous fire damage? I think is not getting me anywhere. Uh, doesn't really say over there how effective it is. Is or isn't. It's not really gonna tell me. Let's just get in there. I had the stamina to dodge one more time. I should have dodged out. If I could focus on winning neutral against her, how many times do I have to win neutral to get through? Because I'm doing about like 2,000 damage per exchange before she resets. Because I haven't been dodging out for two reasons. One reason I haven't been dodging out is because sometimes she'll do triple slash and dodging out will get me killed. The other reason is because dodging out does not advance the fight because I can't reliably win the standoff. I, uh, I set that up. I set myself up there. I, I needed to take the second attack. It's just nervousness. I need to play the fight a bit dumber. Just run in and go bonk. It's like... Letting up on my offense is often getting me in trouble. Too early on the dodge. You know, I really like the item quick menu in this game. Like, I would appreciate them like modding that back into Dark Souls 3 or something. have the range to deal with some of this stuff. It's like, oh, I'd like to reply to that attack. Well, too bad. You're out of range. Her katana is long as heck. That does tend to track for boss weapons. Boss weapons are just legitimately longer and bigger than player weapons ever get to be. Most of the time. Like, the player version of any given weapon is naturally a downscaled version of the boss weapon. Does she ever commit to something from this range? And I actually bet on, like, safe moves. Maybe. Because I'm wondering if I could just bet on punishing the stab, because it's one of the things I can most reliably avoid. But I think she'll just walk back and forth for a really long time if I actually stand out. It's one of the things that fr that's frustrating about the boss, is you can't really bait her into doing stuff, or wait her out. From what I understand, you basically have to be aggressive, and she makes aggression a huge pain in the neck, because she's got a ton of really fast moves. 
bliss, eh? I took one slash too many, and I couldn't recover in time. It's always going to be two slashes. Always, always, always. Because if you only do one slash, she'll respond to you with something immediately, and it'll mess up your day. Rather, you just die. If you go for two, sometimes she will step through the second attack with an armored hitbox. Uh, and then you have to respond to whatever she does. slashes. She responded to my first attack with an armored hitbox. I needed to roll that. That's when it's not two attacks. Okay, I couldn't trade after that. Blade of Nicola. I thought I could, um, I thought I could just go on her after hitting her with the pot. But that's a no. It does not have as much hit stun as uh, Red Main Flame. Hmm. The lowest I've ever gotten her is within about two hits of her first health bar. She's got two health bars. Um, going into second phase, she restores about 75% of her health. And I'm calling that second health bar. I didn't avoid that correctly. She pulled her block trick on me at one point there. It was really obnoxious. She can very, very occasionally, like, block an attack. It's remarkably unclear how it happens. I got no idea. Oh, that attack? Yeah, um, it's almost impossible. It's... Literally, it's almost impossible. Um... It has the most bullshit hitbox that's ever been invented in this game. Like, it's really unfair. Um, the move is called Waterfowl Dance. Um, the actual method to dodge it properly is to 
walk around her in a circle, roll out, look back towards her, roll towards her, then stop. Um, if you roll an extra time, you'll take hits. Um, the other thing you could do is if you catch her when she... Um, oh, the second phase doesn't start until her first health bar is gone. It's the end of the first health bar. Um, what's it called? The other method to stop Waterfowl Dance is you can prevent her from using it by hitting her with a freezing pot uh, when she's charging up the move. It'll knock her out of it. She did her quick attack on me. Yeah, so um, since she's she's she is two full, she's almost two full health bars. The first health bar has to be completely gone. She'll restore seventy five percent of it when she does the phase transition. Her second phase adds a few extra attacks, but it's mostly more of the same. So if you understand her first phase well enough to, to get to second phase, there's not that much else going on. Couldn't do an extra slash there. My understanding of the first phase is starting to get there. I'm getting her low more often, I'm getting in more hits, and I'm understanding what she's doing without having to play calculus in my head. She's still killing me very routinely with Waterfowl Dance. But she does that to everybody, so whatever. I just need to respond to that really fast. So I'm understanding a bit more about her um, ordinary attack flow. If I choose to leave at a certain point in a combo, she seems to be very likely to uh, come after me with the stab, and that's actually really good for me. I can punish that much more easily than other things. Lands with a buddy. All right, get back to game. Now I'm making plans with a friend. need you to fight not at the walls. She does weird stuff if you fight her at the walls. I am 
Yeah, she was not in the mood. Like, she she never likes coming after you. So if you get her forced back to the, the, the slant on the walls, a lot of things get strange. Also, like, it's just dark to look at sometimes. Because I've got, like, I've got a window behind my computer. The veils are drawn, but it, I don't have, like, a blackout curtain or anything. So sometimes it's difficult for me to see the contrast of the screen super well if she is hanging out in a very, very dark location. That was a jerk move. I was slow on the dodge out there. Yeah, so the general lesson of if I dodge out, she'll usually come after me and I can get in two free hits is a good lesson to learn. I missed the dodge. That's the other way of avoiding that. I can run away from two of them and then dodge through a third. Uh, but I need to dodge through the third slash to live. The third slash has her jumping in the air and doing a thing, so it's easier to dodge under. If I'm next to her when she's doing it, I cannot run away fast enough. Uh, it's only if she uses it while I'm far away that I can use that tactic. She responded strangely after being hit by that, because I didn't hit her with the follow-ups uh, with her little dash-out thing there, and then I mishandled the dash-out. That's, that's me building up a bad reaction of dodging out. <clears throat> Ugh. I dodged out and got away with it like four times during that fight, and then she finally punished me. to run away on that one. It will interrupt the attack if I hit her with a pot, but I need to be very far away uh, for that to work. Without trading a hit and causing me to die. Thankfully, the materials for this particular pot are incredibly easy to replenish. No. Uh, you can only know she's going to do that move when she jumps and hangs in the air. She dashes back all the time for all sorts of reasons. Oh, cool. 
Yeah, block me. That's cool. I absolutely hate that she has a random block window. I, I don't know how it works. I need to find out if anybody does know how it works. Both weapons over 600 AR. That's the good stuff. No, thank you. Oh, that was a bad move by me. I, I, she always slashes after doing that side hop. So it was a bad time to approach. Once she, once she started the hop, she had the momentum. But that is knocking her out of water waterfowl dance properly. I had a good idea of when she would do it. too early. Yeah, I can't- if I dodge out, dodge in on that, I'll be low on stamina and time to execute uh, some kind of a move. I probably could have done dodge out, dodge in, uh, into a rolling attack, but I would be basically out of stamina after doing that. The problem is still that hitting her with singular attacks allows her to immediately retaliate. You need to hit her with two hits every time, basically. Well, there's a yes and no about that, because I've seen other builds that hit her just once. But they're using different weapon sets. I didn't get my second dodge in. Am I on mid-roll just because I'm using two weapons? I need to check that real quick. No, I'm on light roll. Thought I was. Sometimes my roll feels sluggish and I have no idea why. I think rolling in Elden Ring is just a bit worse than it is in Dark Souls 3. Oh no, that was the good slash. I can't roll in on the good slash.
I couldn't get out of that kick in time. I'm not sure exactly what I did wrong because I didn't see exactly when the kick started. If the kick started before my R my uh, L1 attack did, then that was the mistake. If the kick started after the if the kick started after the L1, then the problem is I need to be using an R1 there instead of an L1. Because I might not have enough time for an L1. I guess I should have I should have either done a third attack or roll afterwards. That was her rare not reacting. And just killing me right there. This is basically the entire reason the boss is a pain in the neck. You need to attack her, and sometimes she just replies by killing you. It's a boss where you're relying on hit stun to stay safe, and that's stupid. Right, that I can't interrupt. Blade. I haven't been thinking about that too much. It's just been happening. Let's see, how long have I been doing this? Been online for a bit over an hour. So, I believe I only have about an hour worth of attempts on this boss before fatigue sets in and I just can't fight her anymore. Because she really requires my reflexes and mentality to be pretty up there for me to just make exchanges with her. Now, some of the some of my sit down here was spent on retooling my weapons. No, thank you. She delayed her attack! This boss sucks, man. This boss sucks. Why does she have... Why does she have a delay option in her standard attack pattern? And it's not a big delay either, it's a quarter second delay. Like, she has delays that normal people can't see. That really sucks. No, this is all base game. There's no DLC for uh, Elden Ring yet. She's optional, but she's not DLC. She's harder than DLC bosses from the other games. Um, if they release DLC later, like, they might at some point release DLC that lets the main character ha Like, they might release some new accessories that make you more powerful. That might make it easier to beat her uh, once some DLC is out. If there's some really punched up items. I don't know if that one was actually me being too early or if it is that she has a delayed slash there.
Why can't I dodge this anymore? I was dodging this just fine 20 minutes ago. And now I just can't get out can't get away from this very basic attack. I couldn't dodge out. I might have been out of stamina, I'm not sure. I tapped dodge and nothing happened. So I think I think that was just me running out of stamina, and she didn't choose to uh she didn't choose to dodge away or jump out or anything else that would let me recover stamina. Yeah, that boss really sucked. Um, but he wasn't the hardest boss. He was just really annoying. Couldn't dodge? Why didn't my dodge happen? I'm I'm about to throw out this controller. I have no idea what's going on. It baffles me because I'm on light rolls. There's like one item in the game that can possibly make my rolling better. Yeah, the thing about that boss, um, I'm trying to remember his name. Half Light, Spear of the Church. The thing about Half-Light is you don't get to attack him for a super, super long time. You have to spend a ton of that fight just waiting. Um, but when you actually hit him, he dies in like four hits. His homegirl here, I got a whale on, and then like, if you l if you pause for a moment, she does a whole bunch of bullshit that kills you, and she doesn't have the same kind of big openings that Half Light does. She doesn't have the same kind of big openings, and you can't backstab her. And that was the saving grace on Half Light: is you can go through the whole fight just waiting for a backstab option, and then just backstab him like four times or so, and he falls down. He is the most obnoxious, um, like, one of the more rage-inducing fights in that game. He's very cheesy. It missed. It missed because I was underneath her. I knew exactly what was happening that fight, and then it just freaking missed. Oh, man. Yeah, I had the timing right. I responded to that wrong.
Yeah, it's like my character didn't haul back enough, I guess. I don't know. Such a goofy circumstance. have to be ready for her to do that nonsense. There it is. Didn't get the dodge. Oh, jeez. How does that keep happening? I seriously need to get the input display up on the stream. It's bugging the heck out of me. That being said, the damage profile is good enough that I can get through the first phase with only one waterfowl dodge happening, which is pretty good. How many times do you want to do that? Not fast enough. I wasn't really ready for it. That rendition of the fight was going a lot slower. Because she chose to do a lot of kicks, honestly. And the kick is an attack I absolutely cannot push through. She did a lot of kicks and a lot of triple slashes, and both the kick and the triple slash are unfortunately very safe. wasn't giving me openings. When you get openings on Melania, sometimes she goes opening into opening into opening, and you can just open up on her really fiercely. But she does have a really strong tendency to put you in inescapable setups and other things. 
if you actually press the wrong time. It's like an awful chess match. Okay. Uh, I can't do three attacks on that one. I thought I might have to because she wasn't leaving, but I have to leave if she doesn't leave after my second attack. It's not the other way around. Yeah, there I get to do, like, three exchanges. Too late. From that distance, I should probably just be running away, but I could also use the pot. She used it really early. Because, like I said, I had only done f about four exchanges, and then she went for it. Which is... In some ways, it's a testament to how much damage I'm doing here. Because we're doing 700 damage per attack. Roughly. She's in range to do it now. Got it. I got greedy. Oh, I got nervous, actually. I need to remember that hitting her with the pot does not give me the option of hitting her again. It's just a, it's just a reset. Just pulls her out of her nastiness for a bit. The damage is also pretty good, but we can't use the pot for damage. We can only use it for interruption. Um, the status effect that it causes, uh, it will cause it from nothing twice over the course of the fight. Uh, we cannot use it a third time. She'll get resistant to it. Slipped on the B button, I guess? Did I not press it? Hmm. Given the damage output I'm getting, it might be better to not bother with using Flame of the Red Mains. Then again, it stuns her and lets me get... It, it not... It... Yeah. I am always getting one hit after using Flame of the Red Mane, so it's probably a good idea to keep using it for the stagger. That was a mistake. I needed to take two attacks. I got nervous. I used to get frustrated more easily, um, and you can still hear me getting frustrated at this fight, which is just a testament to what all of this is. Um, playing Dark Souls challenge runs um, over time has really, like, worked up my patience. I got blocked. She blocked me. 
Somehow. She has blocks. The sound effect is different. You might be able to hear it. <laughs> there is uh there's a post going around online. Um, there is this guy who rolled up a character and he named the character Let Me Solo Her. And he came up to uh like he played that character and he's just hanging out at the Melania fight for other people to summon in. And if you summon the guy, uh, you can just sit back and he will solo the boss. And he's doing it uh, naked, except for he's got a pot on his head. I was not focused. So, uh, there are, like, pictures of him, uh, online. He's just wearing nothing but the pot over his head, dual-wielding swords, and he will just solo Melania for you. Um, and he'll do it with, uh... It, and when you summon somebody in, the boss gets extra health. So he'll be soloing a higher health version of Melania. There are some people who are just incredibly good at this game. But I'm sure he's fought the boss for 20-plus hours. I got caught on her knees. Yeah, fighting her enough times to become a Reddit meme, like that other people picked up on it and started talking about it, it's pretty wild. And like somebody got had gotten a screenshot. Uh, I, I don't remember if it was that he supplied the screenshot afterwards or if it's somebody had a screenshot of him in the game. It was him uh, not in the phantom colors, but there's an item you can equip to do that. You know, I think Red Main Flame might pick up additional stun for traveling further. Too late. It's really hard to do that fast enough. It's a really strange reflex. She likes to use Waterfowl Dance as a response while you are point blank more often than she does it from far away. If you are just like stancing off with her in the neutral, she won't use it for a really long time. Just to sort of mess with you, I think. The window to actually throw a pot at her to get through that is really tight. Too early. Yeah, I'm losing it. I don't have a lot more steam. <clears throat> but it was good to get in the practice. Honestly, if I beat this boss with less than 15 hours spent on the boss, that would be a triumph because she is harder to fight than bosses I've spent 14 hours on killing. Mistake. She did the preemptive hop. Um, I've mentioned before, the people who are uh, practicing this game so they can do like the really crazy challenge stuff, they use uh, save game manipulation so that they can save the game before they fight a boss. And then if they beat the boss, they can reload and do it again and again and again. Um, there were a few things in Bloodborne. Uh, Ludwig took me a lot, um, but Ludwig was not the one who took me the longest. Uh, Ludwig took me a lot, and then afterwards Lady Maria of the Clock Tower took me a long time. 
And then afterwards, um, the Orphan of Cost took me a long time. Uh, somebody's calling my phone, just a sec. Okay, there was nobody on the line. Now, I did um, I did get the edited videos up for... I, I got some of the edit video, edited video up for my fight with Ludwig. Um, I got up my fight with a Briatos where I featured every single death. I got killed by a Briatos 101 times. Ludwig, I instead did one fight per hour. This was about seven fights in that video. Knew it. <laughs> she got me anyway. That was a backstep to basic slash. I don't know how, like, that's such a weird thing for her to do. I, I've never seen her backstep only that short a distance. That was a half step back. These bosses invent new moves, like, on the fly to mess with you. Yeah, back dodging that was a mistake. I was kind of hoping she would do something else. Yeah, the Orphan of Cults took me a really long time, and there was one more boss after that, uh, Father Lawrence, but he didn't take as long. He was a bit difficult to learn initially, but, um, the difference with Father Lawrence is that his, uh, third phase is actually easier to manage than his second phase. So once you can get to the third phase, it's a lot easier to beat him. Oh, my, I did a second dodge in there that didn't happen. And then my third dodge also didn't happen. That was weird. I gotta watch this VOD and look at what it looks like when my character is just messing up like this. I can't fully process everything that's happening here sometimes. I'll just die. Like, I hit the button. I might have hit the button too late, but that time I hit the button twice and nothing happened. So I'm very confused. You want to do it, don't you? You want to jump on me? That wasn't it. She did. She did a little hop, and I thought it was going to be a waterfowl dance, but it was not. I could have actually hurt her more. Yeah, she's not dead set on using the move at a particular time. 
So um, after that, uh, I think on the stun, I just want to take two L1 attacks, and it's actually more damage than the critical. It's not like I can... I can hit her after she gets up from the critical, though, so I don't know. Maybe that's 6 of 1. It might be more dangerous to take the attacks. Yeah, I got totally baited. <laughs> uh, bamboozled, man. So a buddy of mine is setting up a Valheim server. I'll probably be playing some Valheim. I don't know if I'll be streaming any Valheim or not. Because I think the streaming of Valheim is only moderately interesting. It's like a lot of gathering and building. and I enjoy uh, just kind of laying back and gathering stuff, fighting monsters. But I don't know how entertaining that is. Um, my loading might be stuck. Yeah, it's a really fun game. The crafting is really well put together. I think the game might have crashed. This is this is kind of a crash behavior. All right, um, I'm gonna call it there for tonight. Um, I'm gonna get controller display up. I might just run out and buy a new controller because this is an this is an Xbox 360 controller, so it's pretty old. A lot of the like, half the label information is worn off by now. When When's the patent from these? When are these, when were these first made? Let's see. As an Xbox 360 controller, I believe I've had this one at least since college. It's a wired Xbox 360 controller. So that's got to be, like, I don't know what, 2009, 2010? Like a 12-year-old piece of hardware? So I'm probably going to buy another one. And I want to get the display up on screen for the buttons I'm pushing because I am uh, pretty bummed out uh, because I keep feeling like I've hit the button and it, it and nothing happens. It's starting to get to me. Cool. So um, something will be streamed tomorrow. I haven't decided what. If nothing else leaps out at me, then it's going to be Dead by Daylight. But it could be Valheim if we're all doing Valheim. Um, or it could be Monster Hunter if I'm not doing anything else. Or it could be more of this if I really get a wild hair up my ass and I feel like I really need to try it harder. We'll figure it out. Um, apart from all of that, this has been Jupiter Exile. May we wander again soon. Have a good night.